What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of All the Mods Expert Mode. Oh, yeah, guys. So, I just got done hooking up an export bus onto our reactor, our nuclear reactor. We didn't do this before, but yeah, I added in a thing for quad fuel rods. So, it'll craft it. Yep. And then when this thing empties out, when our import bus pulls out all of the uh, depleted uranium fuel rods, it'll just go ahead and craft new ones and stick them back in their place. Yeah, I saw that we were running low on the durability of these fuel rods. I'm like, you know what? Probably a good idea to get these going and have that ready to go. So, yeah, uh, I just got done hooking up that export bus now with the crafting car. So, everything should just happen automatically. We have everything ready to go. The only thing we don't have hooked up at this point is the depleted uranium fuel rods going into our thermal centrifuge over there. We'll have to look at doing that at some point in the future. Uh, I just got done digging just out a little thing like this for our enchantment table over here. It was kind of out of the middle of the floor. It just felt weird. Anyway, yeah, so I just kind of placed it over here, got all of our different things, our anvil, our enchanter, and an obelisk for XP. Yeah, all situated right here. So last episode, we were working on trying to get Soul Stealer, and we saw that there was the printing press and typesetting table. I kind of want to take a look at these. I was going to continue to enchant these swords and then disenchant the books and all of this stuff but honestly i think if we can get soul stealer 5 and then make copies of it that'll probably be a good idea just for future in case we lose a sword or whatever anyway let's take a look at making these today so there's a few things that we're going to need to do so let's take a look at it uh so we need the wand core so that is blaze rods and gold nuggets that's not bad we can do that if we have the gold nuggets, which we don't, but we can easily craft those. Very simple. All right, so there is our gold nuggets for that. And then we need treated wood slab. All right, so we can make those. Uh, we need a nori crystal blocks, which is iron blocks, I do believe, put through the laser. We haven't done that yet. And then we need the pistons to make the presser. Easy. All right. So the only thing we have left to do now is these Corton steel ingots and then the nori crystal block which is, I believe, just iron blocks, right? So we need to get ourselves three blocks of iron. And while we're over there, let's look at making these steel ingots. So to make these, we're going to need the metal alloy. I do believe, yeah, it looks like it. Uh, so we need nickel, silicon, uh, chrome, phosphorus, manganese, and then copper. So nickel and copper we can get from here. I do believe we have everything for that. There's nickel and copper. Let's grab these guys. We'll have to turn those into the dusts. And then everything else was from out there, I do believe. So typesetting table does require rose gold ingot. I don't remember we had any more or any of that. No, you know what? We made white gold before, not rose gold. So to make rose gold, we're going to need gold, copper, and silver. I feel like we made this before. I feel like it. So three copper and five gold. Whoops. Gold. So five copper. Uh, <laughs> five gold, three copper. And then one silver, I think is what it was. All right. So we got everything. You know, I'll just grab one of these silver dust. All right. So that should be everything we need from out there for that. Uh, another thing we're at to worry about is the magical apple. So we need a magical wood with apples around it. I don't know how many apples. We got plenty of apples. All right, so that won't be an issue. Okay, so we need to come over and start making our different alloy metals. I don't know. Can you put... No, you can't put the ingots in there. So we are going to have to crush these down. Yeah, I wasn't sure if we were going to be able to do that or not. But yeah, we can just run those through the sag mill pretty quickly like this and get those going. So that's not a big deal at all. And there we go. So rose gold should be pretty easy to get going. And while we're doing that, I will throw in the nickel and then the copper. All right, so let's make our rose gold. Yeah, and I'll just go ahead and turn it into the nine ingots here. So while that's cooking, we can grab our nickel, our copper. I think that was it, and we needed some other stuff. Uh, all right, so let's put our blocks. I don't know if this is gonna work with that lens of disenchanting there. Yeah, I think we have to take that lens off. All right, press the button. There we go. Yeah, the lens of disenchanting, that's an expensive thing. We don't want to lose that. Okay, so we should have our rose gold over here. And then the other thing we needed was this Corten steel stuff. So we need nickel. We need two silicon. Then we should have silicon right there. 
All right, so there's our nickel, our silicon. We also need chromium and phosphorus. I know we got chromium in here. There's chromium. Phosphorus, yep, we got that as well. Good thing we did all these things a long time ago. We just had them stored up, right? Manganese and then copper. I don't think we've had to use this stuff. No, that's magnesium. That's the wrong stuff. This right here. I, maybe we did have to use that for one other thing. I don't know. All right, so let's put these all in here. All right, so it looks like that is now creating our last bit of ingots that we need. Um, and again, that is the Quartin steel. Um, yeah, there's no steel that goes into this, but apparently it is a steel. All right, so there is all of that stuff. Great. Um, great all our <laughs> staff of traveling. Again, we're trying to get a our soul shard spawner going with endermen so we can get ender pearls and then we can travel around a lot easier with our staff of traveling using travel anchors it just requires a lot of ender pearls that we don't have right now all right so we can put all of these things back in there so there's a printing press and then the typesetting table we still need to make these magical wood so i need to get four more bookshelves um i guess five more bookshelves and then we need the redstone wire coil, which is aluminum wire. So we need to make ourselves a metal press. I forgot about that. That's fine. We can go ahead and start working on that. And then a printing printing press or a print press chase, I guess is what it's called. Uh, so that requires palace crystal, which is lapis in front of the laser. We can do that in magical plank. So we need six pieces of magical wood. All right. So I got a little bit more to do here to get us going. Uh, I'm going to start working on making that metal press, and then we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys. So I got all the components ready to go for a metal press. Yeah, we needed two steel scaffolding, a redstone engineering block, a piston, a two conveyor belts, and one heavy engineering block. So, yeah, we were able to craft all of those things. Not a big deal. Uh, so I was looking at the metal press mold wire, and that requires Dawnstone plates <laughs> and a worm. Okay, so we have Dawnstone. We've made that stuff before, and we can easily make it in the metal alloy right now. Let's go ahead and put our Dawnstone ingots in here. Yeah, we can just roll that out in the metal former to make the Dawnstone plates. Not that big of a deal. Uh, the worms, on the other hand, are a thing that we haven't gotten at all. And, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, it's probably something we should have gotten a while ago so we can make our crops grow a little bit faster, our wheat production that we have going. Yeah, so in order to get a worm... We need to get ourselves a stone mattock and then till grass soil. Or I guess till grass into soil. So I want to do this in a spot like this should be fine. Somewhere that'll, it's not next to water, so it'll turn back into dirt. All right, so we got some worms there and we got a worm there. We have a total of four of these, yeah. So these will eventually until, turn into dirt, and then the grass will spread back and fix it all up. But for right now, we're going to be tearing up our area just a little bit. I kind of want to grab a few of these things since we're going at this, right? All right, so we are up to six. Not a whole lot so far. Uh, we could go out anywhere, I guess, in the world and do this. But since this is here and this is chunk loaded, yeah, eventually it'll turn back into dirt and the grass will spread and it'll look new again. So that'll be fine. Yeah, the worms we could put over here on our wheat area. Yeah. So the worm does a three by three, so we could put one like right here and I'll keep all of this stuff. It's supposed to make the crops grow faster, keep the area tilled and hydrated. So we don't even need the water source if we have enough of these worms around. Might be something to consider in the future. It takes a little bit of time to get these things. As you saw from all this tilling, we only got the six, but yeah. Anyway, uh, so these things are used in the production of the metal press wire. So yeah, let's go ahead and get back in here real quick and then we will make one of those things and then we should be good to go to make this machine. Okay, so there we go, metal press mold wire. So now we should be able to use uh, the metal press once we get that thing hooked up plus this to make any sort of these wires and I think it might have been cheaper to make some of the copper wire spools or like the LV stuff. Wasn't there another way to make that? So. A copper wire, you put a piece of copper in there, you get two of those. So two pieces of copper will make one of these. And to make one of these, you need, I guess it's the same price. No. Uh, you get copper wires, three of those from the metal former. So it costs 
uh, just over two. So it is cheaper to make the LV wire coils this way. It might be something we look at hooking up in the future, I guess. Okay, so we should probably get this machine hooked up. The book kind of lays out how to do this. You need to steal scaffolding, the redstone, the piston, and all these things. I think we're going to end up hooking this up over by our other immersive engineering machines. So let's grab some conduit real quick. Energy conduit. Yep. Gonna need that so we can get it powered. Uh, I would hook it up somewhere else, but this is where all of our immersive engineering stuff is. It just kind of makes sense to keep it all together. At least to me, it makes sense, right? Uh, so we'll stick it over here for now. We'll eventually, I do believe, move all of these machines. But for right now, let's just keep these things together. All right, so we want steel scaffolding there. Redstone block, piston. I don't know if this piston has to be facing down or not. And then the heavy engineering, I guess, goes up here. And we also need conveyor belts. Mm. Okay, I heard that spider. I thought it might be coming over here. I don't know. Can we turn the conveyor belt with the hammer? Oh, yeah, you can. I think it has to go this way. I'm not sure, though. Uh, hammer. There we go. So if I click this, one of these. Yeah, no. Okay, let's take a look back at the, the book. I might have clicked something wrong here. That is a heavy engineering block, piston, redstone engineering block. It looks like everything's in the right spot. So not entirely sure why that didn't want to form. Whoa. Oh, wow. You can do that. I guess if you shift right click with the hammer. Uh. Okay, well, I'm going to have to play around with this for a minute and figure out why this thing <laughs> doesn't want to go. All right, guys. Well, I'm not entirely sure why the machine didn't want to form before. Uh, it might have been because it was too close to this other multi-block structure. I had it right here. I broke it. I moved it over by one, set it up exactly the same, and right-clicked the piston, and then it all formed. So I think it might have just been because of... Uh, yeah, it was just too close to the other multi-block, I guess. I don't know. So, yeah, you can attach power to this top block. I guess it doesn't have to be to the very top, even though that's where the thing is. But this looks like it wants to attach to the side here. So I can only imagine that's going to work just fine. Okay, so now we need to put in our metal press mold, like so. And then I believe, what was it, aluminum that we needed? Let's go back and take a look at this real quick. Uh, which one was it? This one? Yeah, aluminum. All right, so we need an ingot, and that'll turn into two. So we only need one aluminum ingot. That's actually not that bad. All right, so we should be able to grab that real quick. Let me just warp inside real quick and grab the aluminum. All right, cool. So uh, I'm also going to grab a hopper. Do I not have a hopper? I might not have a hopper. Uh, I think we had another conveyor belt. Uh, I know when I was messing around with this stuff in 1.7, you weren't able to drop an item on the conveyor belt and have it go in like you needed to drop it onto a conveyor belt one block back. Yeah, I don't know. It's a little weird. We'll see how this thing works here. We might be able to just drop it on there now in 1.10. Uh, let's just take a look at this. But yeah, if you dropped it right here, it just kind of like sit there. It didn't go into the inventory and get pushed along. So let's check it out. If we cue this on there. Oh yeah, it just works. I can just cue it right on there. All right. So that got stamped and then it'll just eject into the world. And there is two of our aluminum wires. Perfect. All right. So getting this machine eventually hooked up <laughs> into applied energistics so we can do some stuff will be awesome. Well, most likely we'll want to have multiple of these machines for all the different, uh, yeah, all the different types of things that we can do. What is this thing called? The metal press. Uh, so metal press. Yeah, there's a few different types. We can do bullet casings, rods. We can do gears. I guess that's disabled, so maybe not as important. And the plate looks like we can do many different types of plates if we want to. Instead of using our metal former, I don't know which way is better. Maybe it's better just using the metal former since we can make it really fast. Anyway, just other options for us. So now we can continue on making our typesetting table. Let's take a look here. Is there anything else special with that? Anything else that we needed to do here? So redstone stick and those things. Easy. All right. So we got that done. So yeah, I need to make the magical wood and then these printing press things. I believe that was just lapis. I'll make a few of those. I don't know how often we're gonna need these things, but you might as well just do a few. Lapis is pretty inexpensive. And just laser it, cool. All right, so we got that part done. 
And yeah, all right. So I'll just go and make the magical wood. Uh, we have the apples ready to go. Yeah, let me do that and then we'll be back guys. All right guys, so I just made the six magical wood that we needed for our crafting and then I made a few additional pieces of magical wood because we're gonna need to make some more printing press chases. Yeah, anyway, so there's our magical wood. So let's get going on the rest of this crafting. So we need to make a magical apple. I guess that gives us, is that eight? Yeah, that gives us eight magical apples. All right, so we can put those away. Uh, so printing press chase requires magical planks and you get four of those from one piece of magical wood. We'll go and make one chase right now. Okay. And then I think we should have everything together. Yeah, there we go. There's our type setting table. Awesome. All right. So now that we got those, we are definitely going to need some more of those printing press chases. So I will, I guess I'll just turn all of those into printing press, print press chases. Perfect. All right. So we should have all of this stuff ready to go. Now I'm going to set this up over here by uh, our enchanting table. I didn't take this into account earlier when I set this up. So this might change a little bit, but right now we'll just kind of stick this over here in this general area. Yeah. So that's what that's looking like. Okay. So the print printing press does require squid ink. I do believe. So let's take a look at ink. We should have some, yeah, that's going to require books. We have two. That's not a whole lot. Um, yeah, it does require books, right? Uh, I think we should be able to get this thing going at this point now. So let's check this out. So we put the ink uh, right there. We just right click it on there. So if you hold shift, it'll tell you you have ink sacks. So I guess we don't need the reading glasses like we've had to have in the past. So that's pretty nice. Uh, so we are going to need to put our printing press chases here and then the book we want to copy goes here and i think you shift right click it with enough experience and then it'll copy the chase and you lose the book right okay so at this point we need to disenchant our other soul stealer sword i guess we'll do that now let's grab our disenchanting ring and we'll warp back over here to our laser thingy all right so that goes there we need a book and the sword that's got the soul stealer on there. So we'll just cue both of those on the ground and whoop, whoop, too close. <laughs> Picking up the items. Uh, so this one and this one. All right. So let's click the button. There we go. So now we should have two books with soul stealer. Perfect. All right. So now we can make that into a soul stealer four and then copy that one and make soul stealer five. Okay. So to combine the two books, <laughs> we're going to do the vanilla method which is this and this. So we need four levels of experience. All right. So soul stealer three, soul stealer three, that gives a soul stealer four a nice. So now that we got that, we want to copy this. So we'll put the soul stealer four book here. And then I, I don't know how much, I think it's going to be something like 30 levels. If we had the glasses, it would tell us exactly 30 levels is not enough. We'll try 35. 35 was enough. Looks like we need 31 levels. We have four levels remaining. Okay. So now we have a, uh, enchanted plate with soul stealer four on that. This can go right here. And then we need a book. You can right click the book on there and I'll start copying it. So this book will turn into another, uh, tier four book in a few seconds. Okay. So there we go. There is a soul stealer four. Now this print press chase back here has durability on it. I'm kind of curious. I think there is a repairer from actually additions. I don't repair. I don't know if we can make this. It looks like we should be able to, uh, with, well, maybe not. Uh, yeah, we should be able to. So with a little bit of power, this machine will repair stuff. The item repairer uses 5,000 RF to a tick to repair items that can be repaired in an anvil without needing any materials. So this specifies things that can be repaired in an anvil. So you might not be able to do this. I'm curious that that would work on this plate, but anyway, you should get three books out of that. So you should have two to copy or I guess two to combine into the next tier and then one remaining for if you want the original book back, I guess. Uh, so we need some more books, get this thing finished up. Let me do that. And then we'll be right back. I just went to go look at our reactor and sure enough, the spent fuel has been pulled out of this thing and new fuel rods have been put into its place. We are currently auto crafting up things over here, not having to touch anything at all. 
So yeah, new fuel rods are being made and then it should be placed right in here in just a few seconds after it gets done crafting that next one. We should have five in there. Uh, I'm not sure how long into the process it is. There it is. All right, so there is one more and then I'll be crafting the final one here in just a second. And all of those will be replaced. So yeah, this is set up to be automated. Now, the last thing I said that we needed to do was hook up uh, into this export bus, the other, the spent fuel. So yeah, we get those turned into the uranium. So we should probably do that now. Let's go ahead and swap into our hazmat suit. We're gonna need to make ourselves an expansion card. Uh, What is it called? Capacity card. Capacity card. I'm looking through all these things. It's up here at the top. All right, cool. So we need a basic card plus some kind of a Certus Quartz crystal. Either one that we choose will be fine. And then we're going to need the depleted fuel rod. Cool. All right, so we have all those things together. Now it's just basic applied energistic stuff. So we put the capacity card here and the depleted fuel rod there. Uh, we should start exporting all the ones in the system. That'll heat up. It'll do its thing. Yeah, and then we'll start getting more plutonium. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. I'll we'll go ahead and put this other one in the system so it can export it. Yep, and there they all go. So they're in the thermal centrifuge over there uh, and going to be processed into their remaining parts. All right, guys, so we have all three of our Soul Stealer books now, and I did make a pair of these reading glasses. They're not so bad. Two glass panes, iron ingot, and then two pieces of black dye. I use the floral black powder from Batania, this stuff. Anyway, uh, so when you look at different things on here, it'll tell you what you have. So we have 19 ink, ink sacks. We have 10 books. Uh, it says we have four printing press chases. So if I put the Soul Stealer 4 book here, it'll tell you how many levels you need, 31 levels, in order to make a new printing press chase out of it. We don't want to do that. Uh, we want to take two of these books and then combine them on an anvil. So let's see what the price is of that. So to make Soul Stealer 5, we need seven levels. So that should be pretty easy to do. There's our seven. Uh, we will combine them. So there's Soul Stealer 5. Now if we put this over here, that says it requires 40 levels to copy it. All right, so it's a little bit more expensive to do the higher tier stuff, but it's gonna be worth it. Okay, so we have one Soul Stealer 4 remaining and then our Soul Stealer 5, it does not see what that enchanted book is, I'm noticing. Kind of tells you everything else, but what this book is, let's just make sure it's the right one. All right, it is. And Soul Stealer 4, okay. So shift right click, and there we go. There is our print press chase. So yeah, uh, that's gonna go ahead and copy Soul Stealer 5, and then we should be able to move on. So also we wanna get ourselves mending once again. That Soulbound, Soulbound might not be bad to put on there also, but yeah, we definitely want to get Mending, and I think it was the Experience Rod? Yeah. All right, so Solarium and Energetic Alloy. Okay, so there's our first copy of Soul Stealer 5. It'll make two more with that plate. I don't remember if we have any of this stuff here to make the uh, Experience Rod, I guess. We can search for that. Hopefully we got some of these things. We have none of those things. Okay, so I'll go ahead and make all this stuff. I'll make mending. Uh, we'll probably put sharpness on here, mending. We'll put the soul stealer. And then I guess I'll go through and see if there's anything else we could potentially want there. Maybe looting to get extra <laughs> ender pearls as we're killing the enderman. But anyway, let me go ahead and finish this up. We'll get that all enchanted and we'll be back. All right, guys, so all of our enchantment books are ready to go. We have Sharpness 5, we have Mending, and we have Soul Stealer 5. Now, like I said, we could put Looting 3 on there as well and get extra pearls as we're killing Endermen or whatever else we're going to be making out of the Soul Shards. But it, honestly, once we get the Soul Shards set up and we have a spawner going, we're going to have unlimited of that stuff anyway, so is it really necessary to get a lot of that stuff as we're filling the Soul Shard? Not really. But anyway, I took the mending book and I copied that. So we have two additional ones in our AE system. Same thing with sharpness five. And then, yeah, as we uh, did this before, we had the extra soul stealer fives as well. So now the next step is to put these enchantments on there. So that costs eight for the soul stealer. It costs two for the mending and that costs five for the sharpness. Now, all those are probably going to change as we add the enchantments on, I think. So let's just start off with the mending. That was the cheapest one. All right, so Vile Sword with Mending. Now, if I want to put Soul Stealer on there, that costs nine. So let's put Soul Stealer on there. We'll grab ten of those and put one back. Soul Stealer. All right, so now the final is 12 levels for Sharpness. All right, so let's do that. Grab ten, two, and 
sharpness. Does that say what it brings the attack damage? Yeah, so we go from attack damage of 6 to attack damage of 9. Our regular sword does 17, so it's a lot weaker than a regular sword. But yes, this will put uh, the souls onto our soul shard. And there goes our anvil. All right. So there we go. Vile sword with all of those things on there. So I do think the next step, we need to have the unbound soul shard on our hotbar as we kill things with the vile sword. And now we'll set the type and start adding the kills. So let's head to the end and see if we can get ourselves some endermen. All right, guys. So here we are in the end. Yep. Nothing too special here. Now, since we do have quark in this mod pack, there is an option in that mod where if you're standing below a too high area and you aggro an enderman, they will teleport you out. So normally what you do when you're fighting enderman, like in vanilla Minecraft, you set up a little thing like this, right? Just a little too high covering. You stand in the center, then you look at the enderman and then you attack them. <laughs> you can't really do that uh, in this mod pack. Let me give you an example here. So I'll get rid of this thing. So yeah, we stand right here. We look at an enderman. Let me grab my sword, make sure that's ready. So we look at this guy, he teleports me out. Oh, looks like we got two of them aggro. Yeah, and then they warp you out. <laughs> so they don't warp to you, you get warped out. I'm gonna have to turn off the sounds here, or at least turn them way down, because that's gonna be like super, super loud. Okay, so yeah, this is not going to work, right? So I was thinking what we might want to do is something a little bit different. Maybe just make like a three high thing like this, and then uh, look at the enderman and then you're not below the too high ceiling. Let's try this. We'll eat a little food here and make sure that our health stays full. I don't want to die to these guys. So if I look at you, yeah, he comes over here and we can attack them. But they do teleport away, so it's a little annoying. But yes, we can still hit them. They can't hit us. <laughs> uh, so this will work. Probably what we'd want to do, I think, is something like this, but surround this with... I guess wooden spikes. Can we make wooden spikes? Because wooden spikes will reduce the health of a mob down to half a heart. Um, yeah, it looks like that is totally doable. We need sharpened flint. All right, so I'd want to make a few of these things, put them all the way around here, start looking at endermen. They'll just bring themselves down to half a heart, and all I got to do is just hit them once, right? Uh, otherwise, it's going to take a little bit of time, but... Uh, before we even go that far, let's take a step back here. Let's grab our Vile Sword and our Unbound Soul Shard. Let's see if we can bind this. All right, so I'm going to look at the Enderman. Come here. Looking at you. Come here. All right, so <laughs> it's going to take a minute because they like to teleport away if you look at them, unfortunately. All right, so we got one hit, and then he's gone. And he's back, and he's gone. Maybe it'll be a better idea to hit him with my other sword first. I'm not sure. <laughs> Try and get his health down. But yeah, I just want to see if we can get the soul shard bound. So I guess I'll play around with the Enderman for a little bit and see if we can get this to happen. All right. Yeah. So now, oh, look at that. We got seven kills bound to Enderman. Wow. All right. Uh, so yeah, that happened quite quickly. Very cool. All right. So now that we got that done, we've seen that this will work. Uh, I do see some durability gone on the sword, even though we just got some experience. So I'm not sure why that didn't repair. Maybe we didn't get enough experience. I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm going to go see if we can get some of these spikes made and then we'll be back. All right, guys. Well, we're back in the end now. Uh, I made a few of these wooden spikes. I want to make sure we had enough of these things. So I made eight of them to go directly around where we're standing. And then I put another 16 around that. So we have two blocks wide. So I can look at a bunch of endermen. And they'll all come over here, and then a lot of them can take damage without having to, like, try and fight over one specific spike. Anyway, let's start looking at some of these guys. Let's get a few of them aggroed over here. Let's see what happens. All right. Now, I'm noticing, though, as we're doing this, uh, they are kind of teleporting away. So I was looking to see if there's a way we could prevent that. There is an Ender Tether from Dark Utilities. Uh, that does require an unstable ender pearl. So that's an ender pearl plus wither dust. Yeah, we can make one of those. That's not bad. And it just requires obsidian and a redstone torch. So we might make one of those. That should prevent them from teleporting away at all. I assume that means like we're looking at them too. But now we got a bunch of these guys here all at one hit. We should be able to just kill a lot of these guys pretty quickly without much effort. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be pretty awesome. There we go. 
All right, we got one more. Yeah, with that ender tether, that would make this a lot easier, so they won't be able to continually do that. So I'll probably look at making one of those as well. It doesn't seem like they're that expensive. Oh, come here, guy. Ah, that's that's frustrating. Where are you? Ah, as soon as I try and swing at him, he's just gone. <laughs> Ding, guy. Oh, come on. Uh, ah, almost got him that time. Nope. All right, that one's never going to be gotten. So we have 91 kills on there. I think it was 100 for a tier 1. So we are almost at a tier 1 stage. Am I just not close enough to this guy? Maybe got a... <laughs> what a frustrating... Hit. This one just does not want to be killed. All right, we got him that time. So now we're at 98. So we're 100 minutes away from a tier 1. We're probably going to want to bring this all the way up to a tier 5. Uh, Ender Tether is going to be what we need to do. So... That's probably going to be the next goal for this. I'll make an ender tether. I'll start killing some more of these endermen. And yeah, we'll look at getting ourselves a tier 5 enderman spawner. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.